Hello and welcome to this CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. By joining or scheduling a hangout, you can ask questions, work through tutorials, share ideas, or pair program on open source projects. Today we're going to be working briefly on the Sustainable Mobility API. This is a Python and JavaScript project that helps promote awareness of the carbon and this, mainly the CO2 impacts um, of mobile, personal mobility, that is, transportation. Uh, I've got a pull request in progress here. I just needed to do a little bit of maintenance work. It looks like that got approved. We want to run um, Python 3.8 in our local development environments as well as in production. Um, for example, Ubuntu 20.04 was released recently. I've upgraded my development computer, my home computer, to 20.04 uh, without much <laughs> hassle. It went pretty smoothly. I think there was one small issue with my grub uh, menu ordering where it was trying to take me into um, some sort of UEFI configuration BIOS thing, like low level um, in the boot. And it should have just been booting right into the operating system. But one notable change in 2004 is it ships by default with Python 3.8. I think they've even removed the uh, Python 2. Um, default installation, I'm not exactly sure on that because I upgraded it and my Python 2 installation was still there uh, in case I had to run a couple of things. And now we're, um, when we're running pip inv, I don't have Python 3.7 installed. So the main thing is, does AWS support Python 3.8? And I believe it does. Should check that. Yeah, AWS Lambda. Because one of the goals, one of the targets for this uh, API is that we'll deploy it in a serverless environment. The task we're going to work on today, now that we've upgraded uh, the dependency, is um, sort of a small one, hopefully. <laughs> you can never tell, though. Uh, based on the discussion this afternoon, um, well, without disclosing too much, we're trying to get... Um, hmm. This mobility API aligned with open source projects in kind of a, in the mobility sector, the mobility space. And Open Trip Planner is a you know fairly uh, widely adopted uh, kind of routing engine, and um, doesn't have much on the docs. It's pretty scarce. It's really a technical. Um, project. And I think they redid the website as well. Yeah, it looks like they're using make docs. Uh, the main thing is um, it's got some um, kind of business uh, oriented products like mobility in analysis and scripting and uh, route planning and they're working to introduce um, what was called a multimodal routes that you might walk for a segment of your journey and then catch a bus and then maybe transfer over to a, a train, a longer distance train, who knows, these are just m mixtures of modes, even taking ferries for across bodies of water and things like that. Um, and so yeah, Open Trip Planner is pretty widely adopted and they've defined uh, a few modalities. So in our transport estimation library that we've published on the Python Packaging Index, and we're sort of tofuing, we're eating our own tofu by using it internally, uh, for reasons I can't disclose yet, but we will be making an announcement soon enough. Um, but the main thing is um, it takes an, a mode of transport, uh, and these are some average uh, gram CO2 per passenger kilometer and average occupancy um, values that come from the um, European Environment Agency. So they provided estimates, uh, statistical estimates, based on five modes, and it makes an estimation of the CO2 impact of a journey. And what we want to do is sort of um, provide an adapter for Open Trip Planner modes so that we can run CO2 estimates on those. Um, and there's a few more modes, walk, bicycle, car, tram, subway, rail, bus, ferry, cable car, gondola, funica, funicular, transit, leg, switch, and airplane um, that various transport operators and mobility service providers will support. And for example, there's going to be modes like e-bike uh, that might be a little bit different than bicycle. All right, so what we'll try to do is just make a mapping function that essentially takes an input of a, an op open trip planner mode and maps it to one of the internal modes used by our CO2 estimation library. The initial model is based on a little bit of an older model, 
and we are looking to update the model. But we just haven't found a clear winning candidate for a new model. So we're going to adapt um, to the existing implementation just one step at a time, working kind of agile. All right, so if I hop over here, looks like so that pull request was merged. I can just uh, refresh the local branch, local master branch. It's not really clear to me where I should be doing this mapping. I'll have to think about that for a minute as part of the implementation here. Let me just check Slack, uh, Twitch, uh, to make sure there's no chat messages I'm missing. We're good to go. My stream is up and running. Uh, doesn't seem to have too much latency. Uh, so let's first just take a look at the code and uh, see. I'll think aloud and um, see where this might better fit. And first thing I'll do is create a branch. Branch name will be. Branch off the origin master, which we are, we have locally as well. And so these are some tests. Um, I'll have to write some tests for this as well. I'm going to try to keep this live stream a little bit short. I probably won't write the unit tests on stream, um, but I'll get the initial implementation done, I hope. So it really boils down to two main um, files and an HTTP API. So we have this Python project we'll be working today. Once the Python project is updated, we'll push the new version to the Python packaging index, and we'll come back for a follow-up um, work on the HTTP API, uh, which is what actually gets deployed either via Docker or in a serverless environment um, or whatever is comfortable. We just targeted Docker and serverless right now because it's pretty flexible. Uh, so we've got two main classes in our model, a fuel-based estimator, which was one of our early feature requests, and a transport mode-based estimator. And again, we've got these. It's inheriting from enum, so there's this, um, essentially these allowed values. So either, and I wish Marcus was here to pair program with me on a little bit on this. He was the main um, implementer on this code. It looks like it's giving me the get blame, but that's because I was doing some reorganization. Um, hey, what's up, Lumjacker? How are you doing? Welcome to the live stream. Live coding hangout. Is What uh, kind of projects do you like working on? Are you doing web development? Are you interested in uh, ecology? I just realized that my stream name is not correct, is it? Uh, no, it's not. Fixed that. So either this this core mode uh, enum needs to change, or I need to, and or <laughs> I need to actually map in the um, CO2 estimator. Oh, all right, cool. Yeah, doing making a livelihood from web development. Excellent. What kind of projects do you like working on? Um, do you have any pet projects you're building in your spare time? I'm just going to ask for some feedback real quick from my colleague based on these lines of code.
So I just realized that this estimate uh, fuels. Oh, uh, wait a minute, where'd we go? Estimate CO2 grams. It takes a mode. Ah, uh, yes, and it's got to be in the allowed values for this mode model. So I kind of answered the question myself, I reckon. Um, I wonder if with the Python enum, if you can assign uh, a new allowed value to the value of an existing value. <laughs> Does that make sense? Maybe should I Google this? I can just try it and see if <laughs> Python goes crazy a little bit for it. Let's just say, hmm. the problem being with car, it's a little bit ambiguous. Should we default to small or large car? Hmm. It makes a difference. Get the average of the two, I suppose. Building a portfolio project, excellent. What kind of portfolio are you like building a web blog, photo gallery? Um, and if you're interested in building a portfolio, I've got a couple of open source projects that you might uh, like to contribute to. Um, if you're interested in sustainability or urban design, geographic information systems, for example, we've got a really fun project we're just kicking off uh, in the last couple, in the last week or so, we started the initial code on it. So I think if I uh, just average the two, let me just see if there's a, I always have to Google things. So there's no shame in the game there. All right, so if I get a list of, um, Statistics. So for that, I'll grab, this is an assumption, I'll grab this. Um, The zeroth value being um, gram CO2.
right, so I'm just seeing if I can get some feedback uh, in parallel with my colleague, and we'll just see if this works. Having some drills from my browser console. So I might have to do this in the initialize uh, the init function. Let me just see if I can do it without self. Occupancy is 1.5 because that's not changing. I think it's trying to initialize this member and this member here. Let's see if that works.
There we go. Alright. I think it's gonna work, and that's kind of one of the only hybrid modes that gives us a little bit of integrity. Now we've just got to repeat that. So tram. A lot of these we don't know. Some of them will have to do none or something like that. None, none. Can you do none, none though? I don't think so. You have to have uh, hmm, a way of handling those. This kind of includes you, but uh, what the heck is a funicular? And bus is pretty much the most popular. some kind of average uh, CO2 for airplane although our journey planner is not supporting that right now okay it looks like Marcus is AFK I'm just gonna close it down Uh, modal averages here. Airplane is actually represented 88 and 285. Uh, I think we actually just. 
2184. So we actually, yeah, we did do it per vehicle kilometer. That's so then we're gonna have uh, ooh, that's a heavy one, but uh, 88 times 285. Kind of a motorcycle, bicycle. We need bicycle. More or less, these are kind of very carbon neutral. So, uh, and I don't really know what to do with ferry. I think berries are pretty intensive. But here we go. That's a pretty good one. I don't know if it's uh Source, there's no references here. It's a close, I'll leave it open. PCC. Passenger ferry. Quite a range. Twenty two thousand eight, so it's a little bit older than what even the model we're using.
So we need the occupancy and the average grams. Hmm. Might have this in a reference book. One moment. One forty two. Let's see what we've got here. All right, I've got this. I don't know if it's going to be a good resource, but uh, sustainable introduction to sustainable transportation. Policy planning and implementation. Uh, let's go to chapter modes, roads, and routes. Energy consumption per passenger kilometer and vehicle occupancy. It probably has citations. Uh, so we have personal motor vehicles and cars and transit. Uh, urban buses, United States. Buses are the second highest energy consumption per passenger kilometer of the transit modes after ferries. Ah, Canadian cities ferries average less energy per passenger kilometer than their buses. So that's interesting. Many buses in the U.S. average 2.2 persons per vehicle have an energy use per passenger kilometer of 7.68 millijoules per kilometer, megajoules per kilometer. Something like that. Anyway. <laughs> Ferries obviate the need for a lot of car travel by providing transport connections across bodies of water that may otherwise require construction of road traffic bridges or highly circuitous travel, car travel to achieve the same end. So they're using different units, and there's not like a kind of a table. Despite their relatively poor energy consumption per passenger kilometer, ferries are the most lo heavily loaded of all the transit modes, averaging 91 persons per vessel and up to 4% 4 4 since 1995. However, ferry loadings depend greatly on the size of ferries and show enormous variation around the world. The range here is 39 persons in smaller ferries to, in European cities to 151 in Asian cities, 184 in the U.S. cities. So, we want to get the average of 39 184 and then convert, uh, what is it, megajoules per kilometer? Ferries are 
megajoules per kilometer. Let's see if we can, <laughs> gram, I don't know if those are units or if we can convert between those units. What is, let's see if it, MJ is megajoules first. It's not going to be a direct conversion out there. Yeah, it's going to depend on the energy source, isn't it? Uh, we'd have to think of the energy source for ferries, probably petroleum. So let's assume ferries running off petroleum. Mm -hmm. It's quite a long range. Average of 12 grams CO2 per megajoule. All right. Probably just use this as a citation. So what we're after is average occupancy of a ferry, which I have in the book, and the conversion between megajoules and grams CO2. So from what I understand here, we got petroleum is 43.1 uh, wait, megajoules per kilogram of CO2. No, this is a really confusing table. The unit is kilogram. So I'm assuming CO2 kilogram for petroleum. I like to use these references from the Netherlands because there's a lot of our, <laughs> several of our partners are based in the Netherlands and they've been advocating for us to use those. Per gigajoule. All right, well, I'm just gonna move forward on this. Um, document what I found, and we're getting to the point where we actually need an ancillary document to uh, refer to all of our sources. But basically, um,
very cool. All right, so let's get a citation for this. Oh, it's a good uh, citation. <laughs> Grammarly's got a citation generator now. Okay. I don't see it. Citation means kind of machine is kind of spammy. Easy bib, I think it's a little bit spammy. Scribber, I think is the least spammy citation generator I've found. All right, basically this is, uh, it's kind of a report. Online title is Carbon Intensity of Crude Oil in Europe. Authors, it's an organization, International Council on Clean Transportation. A little bit old, isn't it? Well, we'll improve all this stuff, but I've got to have something in 2010. I should have noticed that in the URL. They might have updated it. All right, we're going to cite this source. What is it? Average um, from let's go 
citation for that. So you can get the ISBN. Paperback Actually, use some pages. APA book page. Citation, where do you put the page number? I always forget this stuff. Text citation. I should probably just do an in-text citation. Make things a lot easier. Six point eight megajoules per passenger kilometer. Per per kilometer. Per kilometer. Per passenger kilometer.
SA-184. Oh, that has a lot of variabilities. Variability between different markets and countries. This is the United States average. It's just not a clear-cut deal, but I've got it. Kind of get something delivered, and then we're going to have a oops, much deeper audit. We are in the process of auditing the library and everything, so as long as I document these, um, where are these sources, I think it'll be good to go for like a 0 0.2. And basically, it's. Um, We should probably pivot to using this book entirely because it's looking at all the main major modes of transport.
just need this. Is essentially per megajoule, 6.8 megajoules. So 12 times 6.8, right? Yeah. Uh, and I will do, I will have peer review on this, so. <laughs> So 81.6 grams CO2, and I think that's in the same ballpark. One person walking and it's pretty um, energy efficient. Um, ferry is going to be 81.6. So, oh, uh, right, right, times the average occupancy. So 81.6. times the average occupancy, which is, just for consistency's sake, 184. All right, so something comma 184. And that something is right here. And ooh, it's way bigger than anything else than it, except airplane. Maybe it's in the right ballpark. I'm going to have it peer reviewed again. I just, I'm not super good with numbers. I don't have a, a great intuition for them. I make lots of really naive mistakes. Uh, that's why I have really talented colleagues. I'm better at kind of like slowly and methodically uh, building stuff, making errors, getting them right, you know, burning the cookies a few times. Uh, and it's taken me pretty far. I've learned quite a lot that way and get to make some cool stuff. All right, so I think we've got a basic mapping here. <laughs> I'll commit this. We're just out at one hour, so let's commit it, get some pull requests. I'll open a pull request and get some review um, and see what people say, see what I should change. And there, inevitably, I'll have to change something. Just take out this header.
All right, so essentially what we'll do, push that up to GitHub. It's going to maybe ask me for my password. Maybe not. Hop over to GitHub here. Thank you, Scribber. This is probably the best citation generator I've found. Doesn't have any spammy uh, advertisements. And we got some good, I think, traction on uh, estimating these CO2 emissions here. It's always nice to find new research articles, though. Because we do, this is um, a model that was published, I think, in 2013, 2014. And we're going to have to find an improvement. Uh, so you see it was archived last year. We're just building on this one because it's pretty much the best and simplest one we could find. It has a lot of modes and occupancy values. It really informed the way the library was defined, but designed, but they haven't published a follow-up. We're waiting for the, for the, either a, an update or a new methodology to be published. All right. So we got open trip planner. We got all those modes mapped in. Oh, yep. The airplane was there. So that was easy enough. Now, if we hop back over to sustainable mobility API, we'll see that I've, um, Open a pull request here. Uh, I've opened a branch. Open TP, OTP. Because the ferry was a little bit different, uh, we adapted most of the modes and needed a custom one for the ferry. So we'll say we'll tag the issue closes number. Does it really close it? We'll discuss it. I think that's about it. All right, unit tests. I'm sure that'll be the first feedback I get. Uh, so that's going to be something, but I'm not going to do it today on a live stream. I'll save it for tomorrow. I might live stream it, but it's not so exciting to watch somebody write unit tests. It's a lot of copy and paste, um, trial and error stuff. But yeah, that was actually, you know, not too bad. Not a lot of lines of code, more research uh, than uh, coding. Um, it's nice to finally document the stuff in the README. That way, when we publish the Python library, it'll be documented. So if we look at PyP, uh, transport CO2, you know, you can just see the first thing you see on the Python packaging index page is the documentation, including usage examples, which is super important, um, you know, installation instructions, as well as testing and the kind of rationale for the project, and more details about the research and attribution of similar projects that didn't quite fit the bill uh, with what we were trying to achieve. So, yeah, we're at a zero point to release. Now we're going to require Python 3.8 soon, but it should run uh, in most of these environments. We'll have to double check that. Yeah, we're at 0 0.2. We'll be releasing 0 0.3 probably within, within a couple of weeks when this feature lands. Uh, that way we can continue developing it and using the product 
the project for internal purposes that we'll hopefully be able to talk more openly about soon. All right. Well, this has been a CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. We got to work today on some interesting research and development relating to transportation carbon impact footprint of personal mobility. If you'd like to get involved with these um, types of projects, be it relating to sustainability, urban design, transport, um, carbon impacts, or other uh, open source projects, there's a lot of activity on CodeBuddies.org. The CodeBuddies.org platform is also open source and under a, uh, it's currently being rewritten with a back, uh, let's see, a back end project in the Django web framework and a front end written with React. If you want to get involved with the rewrite of CodeBuddies.org, stop by github.com slash CodeBuddies. We've got tasks there for beginners and experienced developers alike. And one of the nice things about the CodeBuddy, CodeBuddies community is everyone's a teacher and everyone's a learner. We're all here to kind of collaborate and help each other along our development um, journey, our, our learning journey. So thanks again for hanging out. Have a great day or evening, wherever you are, and stay well.